Hello viewers, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I will be taking you through a silent song and other stories. Major Mwangi's story, an incident in the park. And I'll be considering the major themes or thematic concerns in this story. The one major theme in this story is what we call the challenges of urbanization. And I will look, take you through the story to find some of the instances of the challenges of urbanization that have been discussed. So, number one, there is noise pollution. This is scene where the narrator uses onomatopoeic words to bring about the chaos in the series. The narrator states that cars braid brakes shrieked Ambulances wailed and trains whistled. So the four words there braid, shrieked, wailed, and whistled are onomatopoeic words that signify the noise that characterizes city life. Number two, there is the traffic congestion. And this has been shown by the metaphor with which the city has been compared to a dormant dragon growling clogged up traffic. So the metaphor of uh, a dormant dragon uh, growling with clogged up traffic uh, brings out the city as a place characterized by extreme and tremendous traffic congestion. There is also overpopulation in cities and in most third world countries and African countries there seems to be a surge in numbers of people moving from rural areas to urban centers, maybe to seek greener pastures or opportunities. And this also shows here where uh, the city is uh, the movement in the city or the population of the people in the city are compared to such things as dams. So the narrator says that the, dra the dam burst and people gushed. out of the ministerial offices to move through the park and to find lunch in the city. When something 
a liquid or maybe water gushes out of a pipe, then it is a sudden movement of a large quantity of water. So that also brings about the overpopulation. Words such as people being in armies, the movement of people seen as a tide and waves, all this metaphor and the imagery used thereby brings about the overpopulation, which is a challenge that cities have to today grapple with. There is also the mismanagement or maybe the poor governance of the social amenities in the city. So the story begins by the park which is expected to be this tranquil place and serene environment turning into a theater of chaos, the dusty brown patched leaves, dried bits of grass are there and it is evident that the drought is taking a toll of uh, the park. But then there seems to be deliberate neglect by the responsible authorities for their failure to restore order in the park. And what such example is uh, the personification that has to a greater extent been used at the beginning of the story. The narrator says that the city has to keep itself beautiful. So there seems to be some self-effort by the city without any intervention of the authorities to keep itself beautiful by watering oasis of islands of flowers in the city. So there seems to be no external intervention from the authorities that there be to make things right in the park. We are also treated to a picture of a boathouse that sits sadly when the personification is used then a non-living thing, a non-human has been given human attributes. So the boathouse sits, has been given the human attribute to sit, sadly hanged over the shoulders of the lake. No authority is really taking the responsibility to make things right. Again, the fish pond has also, is also dangerously overgrown with weeds. The purple, yellow flowers are in competition with unclassified intruders. And those are some of the, the weeds and wild flowers that are there. Another point is what I will call the indolence among the city dwellers. And this is a topic that we can go on and on in discussing, especially the contemporary cities. There is a clique of people who are just in the city for the sake of it. And uh, that adds to the crime rate that is accelerating on the upper end in most cities today. There is this group of people who are just idly sleeping on the park. And uh, it has to take the intervention of non-living things. That is the parliament 
and city hall clocks to intervene under the stroke of one to remind these people that they need to make their lives useful. So that also pokes holes to these dwellers of the city who just sit idly. They're not looking for work. They're not doing anything. They're just there. And uh, some of them, when they look at the accusing fingers of the parliament and city hall clocks, then they tend to cast them to show that they are not prepared to do anything. They just want to live this life of indolence. That also shows in the lack of strategy and skills used by the eyes a cream vendor. Uh, the loafer who later throws uh, stones, debris at the fish in the fish pond makes a statement that the ice cream a man is not visionary because instead of looking for places where there are school children to sell ice cream he has been busy hammering the bell for sellers who are not uh, forth uh, coming so those are some of the challenges of uh, urbanization that has been brought out in this story again there is another theme that has been highlighted from apart from challenges of urbanization And that is uh, the theme of conflict. So there is conflict first between the authorities, symbolized by the two constables who accost the fruit seller and the street hawkers, signified or represented by the fruit seller. So the two constables accost this fruit seller demanding for a license. Of course, that is not forthcoming. Then uh, they also demand for identification, which is also not there. The fruit seller says that he has left it at home. Later, from their conversation, it occurs that this fruit seller also has a case with the judge and he pleads with the two constables that he was just doing this selling to settle his fine. So there is that kind of conflict between the fruit seller and constables. There is also the conflict again between the fruit seller and the judge. There is also a conflict between the fruit seller and fellow city dwellers. So when the fruit seller finally escapes from the two constables, sensing that he is going to appear before the same judge again, he thinks that he has his sanctuary in the crowded city. But when he goes into the city, when he runs away 
from the constables, he is nabbed by one of the city dwellers. Another lounge is at him. And before he knows it, he is already dead. Thick stones uh, thrown at him. So that also brings the, that kind of conflict between the city dwellers themselves. And we are later on going to talk about that on another front. Another theme is that of corruption. Though it is subtle, it is implied. It is kind of a subtle theme here, but it is implied. When the two constables accost the fruit seller, the fruit seller first offers to give them five shillings. And one of the two constables seems to hesitate and to look at the money on his hands. So that suggests that uh, there is a kind of a language that the street hawkers who have been caught on the wrong, there is a kind of language of bribery that normally unites them with the constables. Secondly, the fruit seller again gives an offer of 10 shillings. Again, one constable seems to hesitate. It is only the other who urges him that they go on. Then lastly, the fruit seller gives the offer of uh, 10 shillings plus one basket, uh, one basket of fruits. So there seems to be a kind of subtle corruption by the authorities represented here by the constables on uh, their on 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 the kind of interest that they seem to have about these bribes another theme is mob justice Or should I call it injustice? So mob justice, which could be equated with social injustice in this case. It is quite interesting that the city dwellers or the mob who later on killed the fruit seller are unaware of what has ensued between the fruit seller who is fleeing the constables. The constables wanted uh, the fruit seller to produce a license as well as identification. But then when he runs away from them, the city dwellers or the passersby, one of them runs after him, tries to nab him, he escapes. Then another lunges at him, and before he knows it, he trips, and there is a flood of stones being hurled at him. The constables withdraw when they get to the point of the death. They do not want to take part in it. It is only when a police car drives nearby that the police declare that the fruit seller is dead. So it is ironical that the mob gathered here do not even know the crime that this dead man has uh, committed. So viewers, there we are some of the four major themes in this story incident in the park by Major Mwanki. If you like the content here, kindly hit onto that subscribe button so that anytime we produce 
a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. Again, to my subscribers, I continue to thank you so much for your subscription.